Hey everybody, hope you're having a lovely month. I uh, wanted to talk to you about a tool called Google Search Console that, Go that Google puts out for free. And it's a really awesome tool, uh, but most of us aren't using it. Not many architects I know or small businesses at all really check Google Search Console, even though we're very interested in how we're doing in Google and we're interested in SEO. We may not all know a lot about it, but we're still curious about how our website is doing. Um, which pages on our site are ranking and which aren't and, and what position we're ranking in. So where do we turn up in Google search results? The way most of us figure that out is by putting it into Google, just typing in what we're thinking we want to rank for and seeing where we rank. But the problem with that is that you only get your individual search results a lot of the time, uh, depending on where you are, where you're located, those results will change. You don't really know what other people are seeing in their Google search results. So, the most accurate way to find out that information is actually to use Google Search Console where you can see average position, impressions, total clicks, you can see individual queries. So these are things that people have searched for. You can see what your position is for each of these. You can boil it down by country. You can look at individual pages on your site. It's really fantastic. Now to get the most value out of Google Search Console and really to get the most value out of SEO. Um, you'll generally want to start thinking about building a blog on your website and having written content. For the typical architect's website, you're gonna have a home page, an about page, a contact page. Now, SEO-wise, there's not that much that you can really do to make a website like that improve its rankings. There's a little bit you can do in terms of getting published. You can make some minor changes to your site. Certainly not as many changes as SEO people will often suggest you need to make. For the typical arch small architecture practice, you just, don't really have much control over where you're going to be in Google with a basic, basic, simple website. When you start getting more advanced, you start thinking about blogging, you start thinking about writing content, you start to think about what are some of the keywords that uh, I could be interested in ranking for. So you can see my website here, uh, architecture website, was something that clearly for me in my profession, if you want to call it that, is a keyword that I want to be showing up for. And I've got to the f top or second position in the world for architecture websites, which is good. But to be clear, it's not one of my it's not my business page that's ranking here. It's not Dave Sharp Marketing Consultant. It's my blog post about top architecture websites. Same thing for Instagram for Architects. That's a keyword that I definitely want to be ranking for. So my Instagram for Architects page. Instagram for Architects 3.6 position in the world. Instagram marketing for architects 1.7 position in the whole world. Not disappointed with that. Look, you can see though that this is still a very, very low search traffic query because it's Instagram for architects. There's not that many people searching for that. Whereas if we go back to something like Instagram, uh, sorry, architecture websites, it's a massive search query, but the people that are searching for that are a lot less li likely to hire my services because they could be searching for architecture websites for absolutely any reason. They might not, most of them won't even be architects. So each query, there's a trade-off. Sometimes you'll get something that has a lot of traffic but isn't as valuable. And sometimes you'll get something that doesn't have as much traffic, but it could be very valuable. So anyway, getting to the point that I want to get to. Firstly, I just want to get you a little bit hyped about opening up Google Search Console and having a look at look around and seeing what you're ranking for. Starting to think more about creating different kinds of posts. But the main topic that I wanted to get to you, uh, get get across to you was what you actually should do on a monthly basis with Google Search Console or what I do on a monthly basis with Google Search Console. Because it's one thing to pull it up and just have a sort of a poke around and get, you know, get the numbers and go, well, oh, that's fantastic. We got 16 clicks on this page from, you know, wherever. That's, it, it, it's, it's a novelty, but it's not that useful to you. What I use Search Console for on a monthly basis is to actually monitor whether pages a losing traffic compared to the previous month. And the reason I do that is that over time, if you don't update a page on your website, it will begin to lose its traffic, generally speaking. So you might start with a page, let's say a new project or a case study or even a blog post, and each month it's getting 100 clicks from Google. If you don't touch that page at all, the following month it might get 95 clicks the next month it might get 90 and so on and so on and if you just leave your website static and doing nothing the content that you were ranking for you'll eventually see a general downward trend in terms of your traffic in most cases there's always exceptions but 
let's see an example of it on my website. I'm just being kind of transparent, showing you my numbers here. This is real dashboard stuff from my blog. Now, this is the last 12 months. And during this period here, I was adding posts, my traffic was growing, but then as I have a tendency to do, I got lazy and I didn't add any new posts. I didn't do anything to my blog. I didn't do anything to my website. I just didn't touch it. And you can see from this point on, it's a bit hard, it's a bit noisy, but you can see that just generally, it's just this slow kind of decline all the way down to the point where you're barely getting the traffic that you were before, maybe even half as much. And that's in a quite a short period from August to November, my traffic was really declining. And how would you respond to that normally? There's not much you can do, right? You could try and add new posts, but you're not really fixing the problem. Those existing posts are going to keep on losing traffic. Those project pages on your site are going to keep on sinking down the rankings. And in fact, if you don't change your website at all, you will generally find that your website overall sinks down the rankings. So, what happened here? Rather than creating new blog posts, which is good for a bunch of different reasons, but in terms of addressing this issue, it wasn't going to do anything what I did was actually go back to my posts, identify the ones that had originally had traffic but lost it, and then improve them. So improving them can mean a few different things, but in my case, it just meant updating the information, maybe adding a paragraph or two of new information, adding a, adding a section that didn't exist before, consolidating two posts together. So one post on the same topic that wasn't getting any organic traffic, take its content, put it into the one that was still getting traffic to improve that one that was getting traffic. And straight away, the results are very, very clear. So that was at the beginning of this year and the traffic has just been climbing up and up and up since then. Um, and I didn't add any new content to my website, not in terms of creating new pages, new posts, new projects, nothing. I just really updated the stuff I already had and just fresh and made it a little bit more fresh. And so you don't have to do this all the time every month, but Google Search Console, Console is a useful tool for telling you whether you're starting to see the signs of decay on some of your pages. Because wherever your website is at in terms of traffic, as long as you're checking that the individual pages are doing as good or better as they did the previous month, then your traffic's either in a positive trend or a negative trend. And we want to keep it in a positive trend or at least keep it flat. That's how you see improvement, positive growth month over month. So the way that we do that in Google Search Console, and this is the kind of check that I make each month, is to adjust this date setting to a comparison, compare last 28 days to the previous period, which gives us month over month. We can see the overall top line, everything's okay, but that might not be telling the whole story. I could have one post that's doing really, really well, which I tend to, which I do with this architecture websites post, which has done very, very well. But that could just be masking or covering up the fact that I have other important pages on my site that could actually be precipitously losing traffic each month. So I'll do this month over month comparison. I'll click on the pages tab, and then I'll have a look down the list. So this is each page on the site. Blog posts, about page, home page, everything. This is my home page. These are different blog posts. And what I'll do is look at the last 28 days clicks versus the previous 28 days clicks. You could also check the position or the impressions, but this is really the end goal for me. If there's large enough numbers, this number should be enough to check. So I can see this one has improved over the previous month. Great, move down 529 to 460. That's improved, good, keep going. Flat. On this post, something to keep an eye on for next month. Improved, 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 improved. Keep going down, sort of flat. Here we can see an example of my Instagram stories post, the keyword, the post that's really trying to target Instagram story related searches. We're starting to get into some smaller numbers here, so it's not gonna give us as much information, uh, but that's still a reasonable decline. Uh, something to keep an eye on and I can see email marketing as a, as, a, as a subject area is also something that we've seen a little bit of a decline and the thing that makes me more concerned about this decline is that impressions have gone up. So it suggests that more people have been actually searching for this in this case but ultimately fewer people have clicked which might suggest that this is falling in the rankings. So with a post like this, 
I might look turn on the positions and have a look and see if there's been any change there. So you get the idea. I'm doing this once a month and just having a looking having a look and trying to catch those posts that might be having trouble, that might be losing their SEO position. And then I'm identifying, maybe making up a little bit of a list of posts to check. Just go, is there anything that I could do to make this post a little bit better? And so you can do the same thing in Google Analytics uh, as well. Even if you're not using Search Console, you can open up Analytics. Uh, and the way that we would do this in Analytics would be uh, to go to uh, 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 Behavior, Site Content, landing pages so it's a little bit clunkier than google search console but you get you you'll be able to do it as well um we wait for this to load up we go to the date section and we can go last 30 days compared to the previous so we get that same comparison then we want to add a segment and we want to use the inbuilt organic traffic segment and this is just about separating out the Google traffic basically. And we want to untick all users and then we apply. And that leaves us with the information on each page. Now, if you'll get it, if you've changed your pages recently or you have multiple pages that use the same URL, you can actually change this to be a page title rather than landing page, but generally this is fine. And now we can look down and we can see sessions we could see new users but let's just look at sessions and then we can actually see percentages which is actually pretty useful for our purposes go down we can see 45 percent 49 down 3.8 that's the one we looked at earlier i'm looking for anything that's kind of a major decline but i am also keeping note of anything that's seen a modest decline because it might be something to check out uh later on so that's the kind of comparison we'd make. I'd make a short list of posts that I need to review and look to improve, look to see if there's anything I could do to make them better. I'll usually improve that post, update it, and then you should see by the time you look again next month, you should start to see an improvement in the traffic to that post uh, because Google does seem to really prioritize freshly updated and improved content. It's uh, very, very forgiving to a post if you update it, keep it fresh, keep adding to it. Um, so that's generally what I recommend. That might mean for you going back, revisiting some of your project pages, thinking what can I do to make these better and really spending, I would say, as much time improving what you already have as you were creating new content. I think improvement is extremely powerful and oftentimes can lead to better search results because overall, new pages that you add will have a much better chance of ranking and being successful in Google search results if the rest of your website is also really strong and, and optimized and improved. If you have a website that's full of really, you know, um, stagnant average quality pages, that's not setting up your new projects, your new posts, your new blog for much success at all. So Search Console, really good tool. Check it once a month. You can do the same thing in Google Analytics do that comparison and keep an eye on that decay because you don't want to start losing um, your Google search traffic um, overnight without realizing that it's going on and stepping in, preventing it, fixing the problem early. So that was it guys, Google Search Console, useful tool, how I use it each month. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've got any questions uh, and otherwise I'll see you in the next video.